Hi guys, uh, welcome to Messing with JYK, and today we'll talk about a airport. Uh, it's called、uh, Haikou Meilan International Airport, and this is their website. It's in Chinese, and it has an English thing, I think. What does it say? It says approximately the same th- thing. And no, so they're not very technically.、Um, Co- uh, competent. I mean, if you fly to no, you probably should be worried. Anyways, this is a um, this is a airport in a southern uh Chinese um island, the only Chinese uh territory. Like a reasonably sized territory that's in the tropical in the tropics. If we look at, I think we can just look at here. This is、um, the island. The two major airports, one here and one here. And this is Sanya. This is、uh, Haikou, right? And then、uh, this, the airport in question, is somewhere here. Now, this is China. This is the southern tip of China, and、uh, it's it's in the tropical. It's in the tropics, so that's、um, that's like the only place in China you can have tropical weather.、Um, uh, one thing you might notice is that. These planes follow a very peculiar pattern. They form these lines that are、um, somewhat far apart. You can see there are whole ranges. You can see these are flying from Hong Kong to、uh, Helsinki to Amsterdam. They're flying this way, and these Beijing to Doha is going this way. And there are these、um, these strange patterns with with holes in between. The reason is that in China, most of the airspace, and you can see it、uh, in here as well.、Uh, there's a lot of flights, but most and here as well, you can see there's a lot of flights, but there are these holes, and、uh, because in China, most of the airspace is controlled by the military, you cannot actually fly, unlike in U.S., where most of the airspace is open,、uh, in China most of them are closed. You have these corridors where you can actually fly, and Tibet is just a complete empty. And、uh, one reason is actually not safe to fly through、uh, the, the Himalayas. It's it's quite dangerous.、Um, the, there was、uh, in, during the Second World War a bunch of planes crashed trying to. Airlift、uh, war materials, war、um, resources uh, from uh, I think uh, Myanmar into China to fight the Japanese, and a bunch of Americans died because they they had to、uh, uh, go through the Himalayas. It's very dangerous. Anyways, this we'll come back to this later. This weird pattern thing where、um, you have these corridors where.、Uh, Uh, you're about allowed to fly. All right. So why am I interested in this airport? Because this is its PE at the moment, trailing twelve months, four point eight. Okay, and then PB is zero point six two, and PS is one point five, and they are all historical lows. If you look at、um, Uh, the, this this one is、uh, per, uh, percentile. It's in the past ten、uh, years. This is uh, uh, let's just do everything. Come on, is it broken? Is it broken? It's not broken. Yeah, let's do everything. This thing's been public for like twelve years or something. Yeah. It's at one point two five percentile. It's only been cheaper、uh, in terms of days、um, 
in the uh, entire history of, of, of its public traded history, in terms of PS, is 1.25 time uh, percent of the time of the days is cheaper, and in terms of PB, uh, is 1.77 times um, when it was cheaper, and in terms of PE, is 1.21 percent of times when it was cheaper, and in terms of um, uh, dividend yield it currently is yielding about four percent okay so it looks fantastic um, in terms of valuation now what is the problem with the company that it's selling so cheaply uh, well one thing we could look at uh, um, cash flow if cash flow is is uh, is bad then it's not very um, conducive but if you look at the cash flow, this is the uh, operating uh, cash flow from operating activities compared to um, net profit. It's very high. Then you say, oh, maybe it's investing. Yes, that is true. It was investing. Uh, but and then this number, you can see it's much higher. And this is actually non-sustainable. So something is odd here. The way you can see is that in here, this is... Um, uh, day sale outstanding, it's fairly stable, so nothing worrying. Uh, this is um, day's inventory outstanding. Well, it's less than one because it's uh, it's an airport. What inventory are you talking about? And this is a day's payable outstanding. And this has just exploded in the last... Um, in the last report in Hong Kong, you only get uh, semi annual reports, you don't get uh, quarterly reports. So, this is very uh, high, very, very worrying. But this also resulted in some fairly crazy high um, cash flow, operational cash flow. Right? You can see this has been the highest ever. In the past uh, years, and if we look at half year, half year it's been high for like three, uh, four reporting periods actually. Uh, so what are they trying to do here? Okay. Uh, then if you look at ROE, fairly stable. There's nothing really weird here. Um, if you look at yes, yeah, ROE and. Uh, uh, Leverage has been steadily increasing, and there's a bit of a deleveraging in the last quarter, sorry, last half a year. Uh, return asset has gone down uh, compared to uh, 2011. It's not terrible, it's 6%. I mean, a 6% return on asset is nothing to scoff at. Asset turnover seems to be stable. Net profit. Uh, net margin has gone down quite a bit in fact okay so what has caused these mostly um, I looked into it it's actually mostly uh, labor and not just any labor it's contract labor I'm not I haven't found any reason in their annual reports for the past three years four years when this whole contract uh, thing started exploding not entirely sure what the, what that was. Okay, so it's, here's some things we need to know, and the other one is how much do they pay out in terms of dividend? Uh, you can see in 2009, when things are really bad, they paid out a lot, and they haven't been paying that much ever since. Uh, they pay like 20 percent, 25 percent of their profit. So what are they? So so what you see is they've got quite a bit of debt. Uh, lots of profit not really paying down the debt so the only explanation is that they've been investing into something all right so let's see what they're investing um, if you look at this is a 2017 annual report um, on this year it wasn't actually too bad um, Damn it. 
here. They, um, this is the uh, asset uh, balance sheet, sorry. You can see that their fixed asset increased a lot and then their investment properties increased quite a bit. 1 billion and 2.5 billion. So um, this 2.5 compared to what it was, which is 1.7 uh, in the previous year. I mean, this is a company, this is a consolidated. So let's just look at a consolidated, right? And then um, uh, this is uh, investment properties. But this is actually very weird why they would categorize this as investment property because I looked into it. This is the, the, um, uh, the, the, what do you call that? They call it some like, some, 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 something, something, something complex. Let me just search for this. They talk about it. Yeah, here. Uh, it's called the Terminal Complex Project. Um, and it's the mall and the parking lot. Why would these be classified as, uh, as investment properties? I mean, I, I assume they want to operate this stuff, right? And because it's an airport, it's it's a it's a, almost like an integral part of the airport. Are they trying to sell this? Maybe we don't know. So that's one weird part. And the other thing is, I checked their depreciation depreciation schedule. Uh, it is different for investment properties compared to fixed assets. So let's see. Yeah. So for investment properties is 30 years for fixed asset it was something like 15 to 40 years it's not really um in terms of showing a profit it's not really beneficial to 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 categorize it as as a investment property but that's what they did uh, also they um if you look at the depreciation schedule for their fixed assets is also kind of weird Motor vehicles of 10 year useful life. If a com I mean, I doubt if a commercial vehicle uh, being constantly used can survive 10 years. I mean, the I'm just guessing, right? I, I have no experience. And then the machinery will last 14 years. It's kind of uh, long on the long side office equipment five to 15 years again i don't know that many office equipments that would last um you know five to six to 15 years i mean a, a printer a large printer you may categorize that as office uh, equipment so that probably lasts you like four or five years i would guess then you have to repair it a lot but this is somewhat slow um, depreciation, I would say, but it's a, this is a small issue here. So they've been buying stuff, investing, and then, um, oh, let me just go to here. Okay. Um, so how much is this in terms of their revenue, right? So if we just look a little bit down, you can see it so where here revenue revenue is only 1.4 billion right so by <clears throat> buying that ginormous thing essentially buying the um, terminal complex thing they're using almost an entire year worth of revenue to buy it not profit but revenue that's why they're getting into debt and in terms of their total profit their profit margin is pretty high the profit margin is 30 percent so essentially in you need like two oh and if you, you have to take out the uh uh, uh sorry what do you call this a corporate tax corporate income tax right so you need like two and a half a year to pay for the new complex, which isn't too bad, I would say. Um, you know, if, if you buy something and then you can pay it in 2.5 years, seems all right to me, especially if that thing is producing more income. 
Now, does it produce more income? We can take a look at um, 2018. Uh, so we had a wood. Yeah, here we go. This is um, 2018 uh, for half a year, right? And um, revenue. Let's see. Here we go. Revenue increased a lot. Revenue went to almost one billion. So that's like um, compared to 2017, that was almost like a 20 some plus percent increase. Yet the traffic. I remember only increased uh, like 8%. Let's see where that was. There was a management discussion somewhere. Oh, damn it. Let's go. Yeah. Here. Ho. Oh. Oh. Ho. Whoops. Here we go. So passengers only increased 7.8%. Yet revenue increased like 20 percent or something from aviation 15 percent so how do you drive that difference well you fly further uh if you uh fly further then your revenue goes higher for the international destinations and that's exactly what we've been doing and if you look at the uh, non-aviation business which is <clears throat> what the <coughs> Sorry, what the uh, uh, the terminal complex is going to drive? You can see some crazy jumps here. The car park—that's the thing that that's the terminal uh, complex. There's a car park and then the mall, right? Then the franchise, and you can see that here is clearly driving up. So yes, these do pay. These—they're not making horrendous uh, investments, right? So. Um, in, in just one uh, year, they increased their revenue by uh, forty-three uh, percent, with just an a uh, eight percent increase in traffic. So, I would say that was that was pretty good. And if you think about franchise income, well, really, there's no cost. What cost? You have to maintain the 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 building, nonetheless, right? And then. Uh, um, it's basically the fixed cost is already there. The operational leverage on these things are pretty crazy. All right, so that's what they're doing. They're investing a bunch of things. This seems to be productive stuff. And I look, there's some older stuff. Um, it seems to be fairly productive. But here's an issue: uh, the stuff they buy are almost universally from um, their parent company. So the the share structure. So let's go to the share structure of these guys. Let's see. Here. Here. Here we go. There's a lot of related party transactions. Hey, where are we? Going? So their parent company is called uh, Haiko Meilan, and damn it, I just want to find their parent company. Oh, here we go. This this is it. Um, this guy. This uh, Haiko Meila International Airport Company Limited is the actual controller of uh, of uh, this uh, of um, Meilan Airport. And oh yeah, another thing: this company has gone insane with their name changes. It went from uh, Hainan Meilan Airport um, uh, COLTD. To Meilan Airport, to uh, Haihang, which is an airline in China, uh, infrastructure, COLTD, to uh, Hang Lake, like as a shortened version, 
And then to Regal International Airport Group C O L T D. No, I mean like, what? For twelve years of their public life, they changed. They had five names, and the last change happened、uh, in、uh, August two thousand eighteen. So all their、um, annual reports had had like weird names. Okay, so you had this, right? And it's just super confusing. Anyways, so because they have this、uh, controlling company, there's a lot of fishy stuff that I don't really like about this company. If you look at the related、uh, transactions, where the hell is the related transactions? Damn it! Things almost there. Come on! What the hell? Da 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 da. These are all freaking introductions of their information on their board member. I mean, for. A Chinese company that's owned by the the the, the government, because that's essentially what is really this is. Who cares about the board member? They don't do anything anyway. And you spend like twenty years, I'm sorry, twenty pages, to just、um, tell me who the board members are. Who cares? We all know they're just there for show.、Uh, all right, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. Where, where are? Let me just search.、Um, uh, relate. I think they're not called re- related party. No, they're not called related party here.、They're、called、um, parent company. Let's see. Oh yeah, here.、Uh, we had. So here is one. They have a.、Uh, They have an acquisition transfer.、Uh, you know, the they're supposed to、uh, give the parent company some money to buy、uh, some asset management company that is hundred percent owned by the parent company. It's always very, very suspicious whenever you buy like a large portion of your parents' company's asset and your parent company is not public and you are. It's always suspicious because it feels like there is an incentive to、um, uh, fatten the parent company at the cost of the the public shareholders. So this is almost done, and then they have some other weird stuff.、Uh, parent company, parent company. Oh, you can, you can see parent company shows up ninety nine times in, in in this whole thing.、Eh? I'm not sure it's too good because a lot of there's a lot. Let me just find it. it's actually very important. Okay, so for example, this asset securitization, the asset-backed security that they use to borrow money, they are the co-borrower of their parent company. Now, if their parent company goes bust and does not pay the、um, the loans, they are on hook, and it's a lot of money too.、Um, they borrowed seven point eight billion yuan for twenty years, together with their parent company. Seven point eight billion. That is, that is like, in terms of profit. They they make like half a billion a year. That 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 is fourteen fifteen years of profit. It a it is a lot of money.、Uh, so for twenty years, right? So you have to borrow that, and then you know you you borrow it with your parent company. Like you both co borrowers is eh. And if you go down a bit more, they did some other weird stuff. Damn it! 
here. Oh, connected transaction. That's what they call it. I'm like, well, okay. Anyway, so this has been there forever, and then it basically says for um, security guard service and cleaning and all a bunch of all the stuff. The parent company cannot lose money. The parent company will always add five percent to the cost as a management fee. So they get always a five percent. Uh, and these are low asset things. These are essentially um, uh, asset lists, right? They, they, you hire a bunch of guys and they do the the cleaning. Uh, so you you have very little cash outlay. You don't have any investment. The parent company has no investment. They just get a five percent on the entire turnover, and then and in fact, the higher the cost, the more they make. Um, and if you go down here, you can see um, uh, some other thing, the D, which is power and some um, equipment maintenance. Uh, they they to do a 25% management fee. Like on top of the cost, right? So parent company really can't lose. And this thing's been there since at least since 2012 because I haven't gone too far back. The good thing is the percentage hasn't changed, so it's not horrible. They're not, you know, screwing you too much, I would say. Um, yeah, and then there's some cap in terms of how much money they can ever pay, and they haven't usually reached the cap. They really do renew the um, the contract every three years or so. Um, so yeah. So that's one, and then is more, right? Another one. There is an expansion project that they're um, the the parent company. It's very confusing too. The parent company would be building this stuff, and this public company is paying the parent company instead of directly to the contractors. So the parent company does all the the project management, and um, they're almost done here. So what happened has happened, but who knows what is uh, in here? And then if you go down more, there's more contracts with the parent company doing huge investments. And then here's thing that I don't really know what they're uh, like. It says the ownership of the assets of the parent company of the construction project will be held by the parent company. So some of the asset would go to this public entity and some of the asset would go to the parent company. There's no split in here. You can't tell which one's which. So it's kind of a. Eh. You give money to someone in order to build something, and then at the same time they're building their own stuff, and they're in control of the building process. So who knows how much you can get get screwed. And uh, these are large numbers too. Eh? These are seven billion. Yuan, so again, that's that's uh, 14, 15 years of uh, profit, of current profit. And uh, yeah, then, then there's this thing, which they actually uh, could, one of them they couldn't get go through. Oh yeah, this one I remember. They paid a lot of money and then left 5% unpaid. And then the province the government came up with some stuff limiting the transfer of um, what do you call these things uh, real estates in this province for this company or something and they, they couldn't um, finish this uh, transaction this thing was signed in 2015 yeah 2015 and up to now the deal hasn't closed and they've already paid 95 percent of the deal so yeah uh, yeah then you can see this is the delay uh, the, the keep the delay keeps going in 2017 and 2018 now, but now it's actually 2019. There's a new update, so so you uh, think. Oh no, this is another thing. So a lot of screwy stuff happening here, and. Um, 
yeah this is how they split the uh, how they're gonna split uh, the 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 loan the loan was total 7.8 billion and they're gonna split half and half but the parent company is the one that's building the the second phase two expansion project so again the the public company has to now pay the parent company to build phase two it is all very screwy and then they leased some um, they leased some space but that's this is actually quite minor okay so now you get the the picture of this is a company that is very much controlled by a parent company and at the same time has a lot of deals with a parent company on a lot of intransparent things like capital expenditure instead of like just buying and selling right because then you can actually look at the gross profit in this case you cannot and not only that if you look at receivables receivables yes if you look at receivables uh, come on note for two I want note for two go 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 talk about how they deal with the receivables but that's not what I want here most of the receivables are coming from uh, aeronautical services and if you look at the split, um, almost a third, a bit more than a third, actually, a lot, uh, yeah, a bit more than a third of the all the receivables are coming from related parties. So yes, there's a lot of, and then if you look at uh, the um, uh, here, the age of the receivables. Right, for everybody, this is how it looks like. You have very little over 375 days, very little that's, you know, between more than six months and very little, uh, and a lot more, and most of them within 90 days. But if you look at the related party transactions, um, oh yeah, yeah, here too. From third parties, you only have 7 million. It's very little nothing over six months but if you look at related parties uh these are yeah these are related parties most of them are you know pretty late 11 million that's pretty late so uh, and this actually makes sense because this company is uh overall owned by the um hainan airlines now hainan airlines was the Chinese company that went pretty crazy buying foreign assets all over the place. They tried to buy some symbolic stuff in Madrid or something and it got stopped. Anyways, they ran into debt trouble. A bit like GE. They had to deleverage. They were they even had weird defaults. Here's a weird story. Um they own they own this uh Sanya Phoenix airport Sanya is the other airport in the same island the other big air airport in the same island they couldn't pay 45 million yuan in uh, interest and you would say oh then they would go bankrupt right because you defaulted it but holy crap <laughs> in the prospectus it says in extreme under extreme conditions the issuer can uh, infinitely postpone postpone uh, interest payment and under persuade and persuade persuaded to this clause any interest um, deferral should not be viewed as default I'm like what the f so in China nothing is what it seems 
even that can be fake. <laughs> but anyways, uh, there, there's some clause that, that, that says, that, okay, if you pay dividend, then you have to pay, uh, then, then you cannot d d delay your interest payment. But that's like, that's almost like a, a preferred share, right? Just call it a preferred share, right? A, a, um, a, a cumulative preferred share. But no, we call it um, we call it a bond, and this is under control of the same, uh, you know, umbrella with the the Hai, uh, Hainan Airlines. Um, so yeah, so they are really short on money, right? So so keep in mind the parent company, not just the parent, the parent of the parent company is really short on money. The parent company is not public, so they can do whatever crap they want, send whatever dividend they want, and the parents parent company up or maybe like three four levels up that one is really running out of money out of cash they do have a lot of assets but they can't liquidate it fast enough and you, you know, you're deleveraging you're, you're pretty screwed so that's that and uh, um so that's so that's basically another issue with this company and what else oh yes um For Beijing Airlines, I mean, if you remember my old video on Beijing Airlines, they had a cut in revenue because there was some a government fund that uh, was going to be removed. And this is the same thing. Um, about, you can see that uh, every year it's going to be a lot like 30, 300 million um uh, 300 million yuan that's from this guy let's look at 2017 right so if we just look at uh, this well 2017 is 260 but 2018 is going to be a little more 8% more probably so 280 280 million yuan is going to be removed from revenue and these are pure profits they don't there's no cost associated with them so now to take out 280 um, million yuan from here from uh, from their profit uh, of, of 2017 which means was my was my was my was my where is Where's my profit? Where's my profit? Give me my profit. Uh, okay, so I think I'm too far down. These are notes. These are notes. These are notes. Oh. Okay, let me just use. I hate Mac because this thing disappears. Somewhere. Okay, somewhere here. Profits soon. This is still cash flow. Profit. Okay, total comprehensive income, two uh, four point uh, four hundred eighty. So minus two eighty. Now you add two hundred. So now you have a company that owns. You know, two thousand eighteen maybe slightly better, but say two fifty. Now your earning is two fifty, not five hundred. So your uh, PE essentially would double. So if you look at this. P would double to about nine. Okay, so nine P is still not too bad. Uh, the PB is really low, right? So what is the what is the problem? This is, this is one more problem they have. And you say, oh my God, this company seems like full of uh, worms. Yes, they are like full of worms. There is a debenture of some sort. 
Oh yeah, 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 here we go. Just look at this. Look at that. The they already paid some, but man, the current portion of non-current liabilities is one point three billion. One point four billion, and their cash. is 200 million their current uh, ratio is about 0 0.22 so unless they can raise more money they would go into default as well unless i mean i haven't checked their their prospectus on their on their uh, bonds or debentures maybe they have a clause that says oh we can postpone forever uh but then you can't get the dividends but this is all very, this is just this is all very bizarre, right? So this this company definitely needs um, new capital in some way, either debt, new debt, or new equity. They cannot, they simply cannot pay out of their cash flow because because they do make a lot of cash flow. They make like I think they make like uh, last year was something like some ridiculously high number because they were postponing paying their suppliers free cash flow free cash flow where's my free cash flow yeah here we go you're gonna just subtract those two right so the operating so you, you they have a billion dollar in terms of uh operating uh cash flow and then they have to pay about 300 million in terms of investments so they get they get a lot. They get like seven hundred million. You know, this is not sustainable. Let's say five hundred million a year, which is on par with your profits. So it's 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 pretty accurate. They're they're not, you know, cooking the books as that much. Um, but it's not gonna cover your one point three billion dollars that's coming due, in in um almost uh, you know, in in like half a year or something so yeah this is what i worry about a lot now is the government gonna let this thing go bankrupt no because and and yes government does have a say because the government essentially controls hainan airlines hainan airlines so through a bunch of layers control this thing if this thing goes down somebody some heads gonna roll there's a there's a law in china that says um you shall not lose uh state-owned pop uh, state-owned assets it's an actually a crime um i'm not bullshitting either it's, it's there's a lot of weird uh, laws in china that i just discovered um so yes that now having spent 40 minutes talking about why this thing is shit um let me tell you why this is good first of all this island is special in the sense that it is um, you can do duty-free shopping as a Chinese in this island and take it out right so it's a duty-free uh, island it's part of China you don't need a visa to get to it and you can take a train to there right so it's a, a lot of shopping goes on there it's only um it's the only tropical area in china um uh professor jetsner jetsner jester uh if i butchered your name i apologize uh remind me that you know uh retired people like warm places Chinese are getting older more people will go there and it's a nice place too and uh, the other thing circling back to these weird flight patterns they added three corridors to I think to the sides so no you cannot fly straight but you can fly to the sides um, so that more um, airplanes can now uh, you know depart from this so these are all good things and um, 
uh, it's also in terms of PB extremely cheap. Now, obviously, you have to now consider whether that B is really uh, is 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 really accurate, right? Are they over accounting for their assets because you have this weird parent company thing, and they say everything is audited by third party, but this is China. Um, and the other thing I think that the asset is slightly overstated is you can see that the uh, uh, return on asset has uh, halved since uh, 2011. Okay, so would I want to buy this thing? Mm, I'm very tempted though. I mean, I just said a bunch of problems with this company, but maybe it won't go bankrupt you know but if, if, if it if it ends up being able to pay its debt it probably will bounce back really really strongly uh there's a huge worry i think about the liquidity of this company if, if that goes away that clears up almost half of its issues the rest of issues are chronic we all know this company has has, has all these weird transactions with its parents um yeah and then the other thing is uh the uh, removal of uh the 280 million uh yuan in uh essentially revenue and pure profit well there's nothing you can do about it um the uh return will be just lower but then you get 10 p on a growing airport this thing is growing uh it's good and you're get you are getting almost like half book value and oh the last thing i think it's called skytrax yes this is the only mainland chinese airport that is a five-star airport this is a five-star airport All right, so this is um uh, if we look at airport scores or rating sorry ratings five-star airlines there are only nine airports in this entire world um, you can see there are only oh these are air lines sorry I meant airports and we want airport ratings five star the nine I've never heard of this Baku but I know the Singapore Changi and then I don't know what this Chubu Central. This almost feels Chinese, uh, Japanese. But anyways, this is it. Haiko Melan. And then Hong Kong. And uh, Ichian. And Munich. Haneda. These are... This is on par with these airlines, right? And this is the only one in China, in mainland China, not including Hong Kong, that ranks uh, a five star, and there are a lot of airports in this world. Right, so if you just look at four star, suddenly you got fifty seven. Right, so it's it's a very difficult spot to obtain. So they are not poorly managed by any means. Um, their their uh, passenger grows like crazy. Oh yeah, yeah, we should look at revenue here. Their revenue grows pretty fast. Look at this. Revenue grows pretty fast. This is this is line that's pretty steadily going to the right. Profit grows generally pretty steadily to the right. And cash flow grows. And yeah, so it's, um, it is a growing company. It also pays a dividend, uh, so you have a bunch of weird issues with the parent. You have um, uh, a liquidity issue, so you have to make up your mind. I am tempted, but I haven't made up my mind yet. So this is a very long video. I hope I haven't borne you to death again, and see you next time.